You know, it is easy to guess why Martha is feeling burdened in our gospel reading today. It's not really because she has a lot of things to do in the kitchen. In fact, I think, sanay na naman siya. I think she's quite used to doing it all really efficiently. She's burdened because she wants to do something else. Her sister is there, seated in the living room, enjoying the company of Jesus, listening to his teachings. Parang gusto rin niyang gawin yun. But, unfortunately, she seems to have convinced herself that she had no choice but to do all the cooking in the kitchen instead. That is how she has defined her role. She is also burdened by the definition of a woman's role as presupposed in Jewish society. A woman in the Jewish culture in the time of Jesus belonged to the kitchen. That her role is to serve the men. You know, this was part of my reflection last Sunday about divorce, if you remember. She was quite used to playing this role before until her sister started going against it. At that moment, Mary chose the role of a disciple seated at the rabbi's feet and learning from him, taking to heart the word of God so that she could serve it too, like delicious food, the way Jesus would do it. Actually, may dalawang taong nagluluto dito sa ating gospel reading. Martha is cooking up the literal food in the kitchen. And Jesus is cooking a different kind of food. The spiritual food in the living room. And she's mentoring Mary, teaching her how to do it. In case you did not know, preparing for a homily like this is like cooking. It is a whole art and a whole discipline as well. You know, when you prepare a dish, you have to make sure that it is palatable. You have to serve it well. And believe me, hindi kami laging nagtatagumpay. Perhaps because I love to eat like a kapampangan, e kapampangan ako, I have always learned, or I have always loved to learn how to prepare the food myself. Kapag masarap ka daw kumain, eh matututo ka rin magluto ng masarap. I used to enjoy watching my mother do it in the kitchen when I was still a little boy. There were times when I wanted to assist her, but I was always called to do the men roles in the garden while my sisters did the women roles in the kitchen. Sa totoo lang, there is really something oppressive about this kind of typecasting of roles, pambabae, panlalaki. I wonder how many wives feel so burdened when their husbands just cannot include among their men roles some share. For instance, in the babysitting. May alam akong mga lalaki who think it's below their dignity to change a baby's diapers or to wash the dishes. So you can see what I mean when some women really feel burdened because their husbands think it's below their dignity to do certain things, even in emergency, to do certain things sort of assigned to women. 
I think Jesus has some important tips in today's gospel for burdened people like Martha. Kaya, ang title ng homily ko ngayon ay Unburdening Yourself. First tip, don't do what you need to do kung mabigat sa puso mo. Ginawa mo pa. And most likely, papalpak because mabigat sa loob mo. With a heavy heart, even the lightest task can become a heavy burden if you carry it out with a heavy heart, meaning reluctantly. If you cannot give your whole heart to it. Like the reluctant prophet Jonah sa ating first reading ngayon. The story of Jonah will continue to be read tomorrow. So bukas ko na lang ipasok sa homily si Jonah. Let's reserve him for tomorrow. The second tip on how to unburden ourselves. To, our, to unburden ourselves from the overload of stereotypes and pressures, especially the pressure to live up to social expectations. Abay, we only make ourselves miserable when we do things against our will, when we do things only to comply with an obligation or to meet up to someone's expectations. Minsan kasi, we misunderstand obedience. Eh. Isa sa mga paboritong expression of some pious Christians is surrender to God's will. You know, I hate that expression, surrender to God's will. Ang alam kong sumusurrender, yung natalo sa gera. Para bang wala kang choice. Andiyan ka na eh, sumurender ka. Surrender to God's will. Well, no. Obedience is not about surrendering. It is about embracing God's will as your own. It is about freely responding to God's invitation. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus gives his disciples a good summary of what it takes to unburden our lives. And how to live what Milan Kundera calls the unbearable lightness of being. Ginawang pelikula yon, The unbearable lightness of being. Sabi ni Jesus, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. He is offering a secret to living the lightness of being. Gusto mong gumaan ang buhay mo? Well, learn from me. Ang sabi niya, learn from me. At ano yung ituturo niya? Ang kasunod is a bit paradoxical. Sabi niya, take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me. Kala ko ba, Lord, pagagaanin mo ang buhay ko tapos you ask me to carry your yoke? Well, what he is trying to tell us is what often burdens us in this world is not really the weight of the loads that we carry, but rather the manner in which we carry them, as well as the attitude in carrying them. Diba may kasabihan tayo sa Tagalog, wala naman yan sa dinadala. Nasa nagdadala. Wala yan sa dinadala. Nasa nagdadala. O nasa paraan ng pagdadala. I am sure, mabigat din yung binuhat ni Jesus na cross. I am sure, the cross that He carried was very heavy. But what made it light was his will to embrace it as the Father's will. That was all that it took to make His yoke easy 
and His burden light. Magandang ibigay na tip yun sa mga taong miserable dito sa mundo. At minsan, pag miserable ka, gusto mo miserable din yung ibang tao. Let us help them unburden by learning to carry our yoke with love. To carry our burdens as an act of love like Jesus did for the redemption of the world.